In an experimental study, participants are randomly assigned to two or more groups. Experimental groups and control groups. And experimental groups are the ones that we are manipulating. And they're the ones that represent our independent variable. And we can think of the people in the experimental group as being exposed to our manipulation or, or treatment if this was a drug study. So let's say I want to do a study where I want to look to see whether or not a new type of medication can help decrease headache duration or headache length. And that new drug, let's just call it drug X for now. I could just have one experimental group and one control group if I wanted, where I would have one group that received drug X and one group that didn't. But if I was interested in seeing how different amounts of drug X influenced headache length, I could have multiple experimental groups. So let's say I have a 160 milligram group, and maybe that's about a, a children's, a kid's dose for the drug. And then maybe I'll have another group that gets 325 milligrams, which would be a regular dose. And then maybe I'll have another group that's 650 milligrams of that drug, and that would be an extra strength example. And so these three things would all be experimental groups. What about my control group? Well, simply giving people a drug and seeing if they get better actually has no meaning unless I'm comparing it against a group of people who haven't received the drugs. Otherwise, how will we know that they really improved? In the case of this drug study, and in lots of drug study, there are typically more than one type of control group. And that's because sometimes the very act of taking a pill when you're sick can actually make you feel better, which is something that's called the placebo effect. The idea behind the placebo effect is that the very expectation that you will feel better after taking medicine can sometimes make you feel better all on its own. And this is a real thing, and it's super cool, and we could talk a lot more about it, but what you need to know about it is that this is a real effect. In fact, in order for the FDA to approve a new drug for public use, scientists must show that that drug is more effective than the placebo effect alone. But what does that mean for our control groups? We could just give drug X to our experimental groups and no drug X for the control group. But then how would we know if drug X was really effective in curing the headache or whether or not it was just the placebo effect in action? In order to clear this up, we can have two control groups. We'll have a no pill group. And then we'll also have a second control group, which will be our placebo group. In the placebo group, participants will still be given a pill, but it will be an, an inert pill, meaning that it won't contain anything that could actually help cure a headache. So to review, we have five groups. We have three experimental groups with different levels of drug X. We have two control groups, one group that receives that doesn't receive any pills, and one group that receives placebos. And remember that ideally people have been randomly selected to be in one of these five groups, and they won't know which group they're in. So now let's say we've done our study, we've run all of these conditions, what might our results look like? Well, I can draw a graph for us. So let's say on my y-axis that I have headache duration. And maybe up here we have three hours, and here we have two, one, and then zero. And then of course, all the different things in between. And then we'll put our different experimental groups and our control groups on the x-axis. Here I'll have the no pill control group. And here I'll have our placebo control group. And then over here we'll have our 160 milligram group. And that's an experimental group. Here we'll have our 325 milligram group. And that's also an experimental group. And then lastly, we'll have our 650 milligram group. So what might we expect to see? Well, for the individuals who are in the no pill control group, they just had a regular headache as normal. And apparently it's a really terrible three hour headache, but they didn't get any relief. And this is our baseline by which we're going to compare all of these other groups. In fact, let me make it a, a bar graph. I apologize that these lines are not even close to something straight. 
So then maybe for our placebo group, and this is our group that took a fake pill but didn't know that they were taking a fake pill, maybe they actually showed some improvement. Maybe now their headache is only two and a half hours long. So they did actually get some relief from the very act of taking a pill. And now we know that this is the placebo effect. Amount of improvement that we can expect to see just when someone thinks that they're taking a substance. And now we can compare all of our experimental groups against this placebo group. And in order to put drug X on the market, we had to show that these groups show more improvement than the placebo group. So let's say now we have our 160 milligram group and hopefully I've matched these colors well enough. All right, so here we see that they've shown some improvement. And then our 325 milligram group, maybe they've shown even more improvement. And for our 650 milligram group, for the group that got the extra strength dose, maybe we see really vast improvement. And so what does this graph tell us? It shows us a number of things. First of all, it shows us the average duration of a headache when someone isn't taking any medication. It shows us the decrease in headache duration that can be attributed just to placebo alone or just by the expectations of what it means to take a pill and what a pill means and what pills usually do to cure headaches. Then we have our 160 milligram group and as you can see, that group shows improvement over the placebo group. So already we can tell that drug X is more effective than a placebo. But within the experimental groups, we also find something really interesting, something that we wouldn't have seen if we had just picked, you know, one dose to test as an experimental group. We see that the more of drug X that someone takes, the shorter their headache duration. So that's actually a ton of information that we have on this graph, a ton of information that we can have just from having these five different groups. There are three experimental groups and our two control groups.